What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. As you guys have seen in the last video, we pulled this motor out of that Suburban. So the next step in our process after pulling this in the transmission and getting everything out is getting the wiring harness sorted out. So to do that first, I'm gonna take the wiring harness off the motor, as you can see right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off the motor. That's the first step that we're gonna do. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the wiring harness and lay it out on the ground and trace all the connectors from the PCM and the fuse box. Make sure we know what everything is and we're gonna start thinning out the harness. So I am gonna use the stock harness that was from the Suburban and modify it so that it works with the S10. There's plenty of good websites to find out the swap information. Uh, LS into an S10 is a pretty common swap in general. There is one website, I believe it's LT1 swap or uh, something along the lines of that, lt1conversion.com. I'll throw it down here below, but that website has a lot of good information on your PCM. Gives you both the blue C1 PCM connector and the red C2 PCM connector, the pinouts for those, and it tells you what you need, what you don't need, what you have to add as far as input. So like your electric fans, this motor doesn't have electric fans on it. So if we want that, uh, there's already a pin out in the PCM for that. We just have to add a pin in and run that to our relay for our fan. So he, he lays everything out. It should make it really easy. I am kind of nervous about doing this. I've never done this before. I've never modified a harness and I'm not the best at doing electrical work. So we'll see what we do. But first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and start labeling everything on the motor for the harness. So like the fuel injectors, the ignitions, all that kind of stuff. Get all that labeled out on the harness so I know what goes to where when we go to put it back together. We'll go from there. So let's go ahead and dive on in. Alright, so as you guys have just seen, I have pulled the engine harness off and it's off. And I will say the engine looks a lot cleaner with none of the wiring on there. I mean, it's insane. It also looks a lot smaller without it all on there. If we look over here, I have laid the harness out kind of just so you can get a scale on how large it is. We got our main engine harness over here. There's more of it here. We have power and grounding here. ABS on the passenger front. So uh, it's all kind of out and about. What we'll end up doing is tracking these connectors down. These right here are your main PCM connectors. You got your blue C1 and your red C2. And these are where you're gonna start pulling wires from. So we're gonna thin this out and add a couple pins in there. So as I said before, we're gonna add the electric fans in there. We're gonna pull out all the stuff we don't need. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much how we're gonna go about doing this, but for now, I'm gonna wrap it up for the day. What's going on, guys? It's the next day. I am still gonna continue working on this harness and depinning it and making it a lot cleaner than what it looks like right now. I already have a couple things taken off. As you can see, I got a couple connectors off of items we don't need, a couple extra wires. And really, we're just going to thin it out and see what we end up with in the end. Hopefully, it's a little bit cleaner and a lot more simpler. And obviously, when we're done with this, I'm going to go ahead and re-loom it and just make it look a lot better than this. I mean, this is a mess, but I'm still working on it. So that probably won't be until I get the harness in the truck so I can see how I want everything routed. Once I see how I get everything routed, then I will go with the cable routes or uh, with the looms for the cable routes but until then it's going to stay like this for the most part I might start taping it up just to keep it somewhat organized and branched out while I'm still working on it but that's about it so let's get to it 
These are the guides I've been using to judge on what wires I need to take in and out. All the things I have highlighted yellow are items or pins that should be removed from the harness. The blue items here and here, those are what need to have an external connection from the motor. So like PCM ignition supply, PCM battery supply, tack output, fuel pump relay control, those kinds of things. They all need outputs. This is the guide that I use to create these. So I got these diagrams online. I had to pay like $30 a vehicle. So I did one for my S10 and the Suburban so I could have the wiring diagrams for both. This came from LT1 Swap's website. It's free it's all completely open and this is what i used as a basis so he uses that same scheme for deciding what pins to remove and what need external connections and whatever he also has the where you need to input for your fan controls so this has been my main guide for what i'm doing it also has a automatic transmission to manual so what you need to remove for that and it's a really good starting guide for me and that's what i've been using so i would highly suggest looking that up if you plan on doing this. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you a little bit better on how to depin the harness connector. So this will start with the red one, C2, for the computer. So there are two protective coverings. One is this red protective covering here, and one is this gray one on the back to protect the pins. You need to remove both of these to get the pins out. So to do that, on the back side gray one, this one's usually done first. You will take some pliers, some needle nose, whatever you have lying around, and grab the ends. And you're supposed to pinch the end right here and pull up. It is not the easiest thing to do. I have difficulty doing it. So it may take me a few attempts to do it, but that is how you do it. I got one side popped. I got mine off. I ended up breaking one of the tabs in the process. It's still attached by zip ties, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these zip ties. We're gonna to need to do that anyway when we start pulling wires out. So I got this cover off, so that, that's, that's the first protector. That's the backside protector for the harness and the pins. Now we need to get this front side harness, which is very easy comparatively. So there are two tabs. There's one tab here, a slot with a white groove tab. And then on the insides as well, you just push those in and pull up on the red protector and they will come off. So I like starting from the inside. Just push it in push it in, bam, pulls right off. And once you get those off, you can see you have access to all your pins. So do the same thing for the other side. Push in with the screwdriver. While pulling up, makes it easy. Push in while pulling up and bam, pops that side out too. And those can only go on one way. There's a little L channel right here and here and same thing here and here. So they only go on one way, you can't put them on the wrong way. And now you have access to all your pins. It is an 80 pin connector, now not all the pins are used. As you can see, there's a bunch of blank spots that are pins that aren't used. So you really don't need to worry about those except for the ones where you wanna add the electric fans on if you are adding electric fans. So just be advised at that you might have to do that. The first pin it says to take out is the fuel pump relay control secondary so not using that now the pins uh, I don't know if I'm holding it the right way but it goes from 1 to 40 on the bottom and then 41 to 80 on the top now if you look at the back the back side actually has all the numbers labeled out so uh, according to this the top side right here it starts with one on this left end or the right end when you're looking at it this way goes down to 40 and then 41 to 80 so we are looking at taking out pin number three which is tan for the fuel pump relay control secondary 
So we'll look on the back here that I don't even have that wire in here, so don't need to worry about it. That is marked, checked off. We don't have to worry about it. Check it off my sheet. Now the next thing on the list is where we would add a pin and that would be to number nine. So number nine actually already has a pin. Or no, this isn't adding a pin. Uh, this is, the next pin we have here is a pin that will need to have an external control. So this is the fuel pump relay control primary and it's this number nine green, dark green and white. So it's green and it's got that white stripe on it. That will need an external signal, but we're not gonna mess with it right now. Next is 34. Let's see if we have a pin 34. We do, it should be dark green and white. And it is, and this will be our evap canister purge solenoid. So we do not need that one. So that will be the first one that we get rid of. So the 34 is this dark green one on the end. Now, to get a pin out, you can see there's a group of four pins coming out, or four wires going in, four wires here. This one is the far one on the right on this side, or the far one on the left on this side. So it is pretty easy to get this out. There's these little tabs here, and what we'll do is we'll push in with the screwdriver, and you can see it gets loose, the pin gets loose and moves around, and then pull it out and it's really that easy and then when you're done just put the tab back down so next what i'll do now that we have this pin out is i will trace the pin all the way through the harness to where it comes from if it goes to a connector that connector can come out and etc all the wires connected to the connector can come out too so let's say this goes to a connector with four wires in it and this is one of the four well, you don't need the other three wires because it's not being used, so we can go ahead and take those three wires, trace it from the connector back to where it originates, and pull all those. So, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to follow this wire and see where it goes. Alright guys, so I have finished depinning my harness for the time being. I have gotten quite a few wires out and my dad came and helped me and we got a bunch of the wiring from this side out as well. So most of this was the chassis harness stuff. Uh, really all we have now left in this is more wires that are cut for the chassis harness and the remaining wires here go to the fuel pump cables, connectors that we have on the end. So we are figuring that out. The fuel pump connector actually had one wire going to this red connector that goes to the fuse box. That's the main power for the fuel pump and it actually crosses the wire to a relay from this red plug to this black plug that go to the fuse box. So this probably gives it the signal from the computer to turn on the fuel pump and then that crosses over the relay and from that plug and goes to the fuel pump. So. Yeah, I mean, we thinned it out quite a bit, and it looks, it, it's getting thinner. The gap is getting thinner. The amount of wires is thinning out. These are all the connectors that we have taken out and miscellaneous items. So, yeah, I mean, it's coming together. It's looking a lot better. We're getting closer. Really, the hardest part about this whole thing is going to be when we integrate this harness with the S10 harness. So, by that, I mean... Uh, crossing over stuff like that fuel pump power. I, I want to use the stock fuse box with the S10 just because it'll look more factory, it'll look cleaner, and if I can get everything to integrate in that and work functionally, then that's my goal. So it might take a little longer for me to figure out all the wiring for this, but it will be worth it in the end once I get it all figured out. So I'm going to go ahead and stop for the day. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.